you know, at the end of creation week, you have all these different creatures already there. You have flying things and swimming things and creeping things. And when I look at the data of nature, I see both similarity and difference. Mm -hmm. So an evolutionary biologist would say, look at all the similarity, and that puts everything on a common evolutionary tree. And I would say, yes, there is similarity, but there are also significant differences. And the significant differences, and this is really important, they end up exactly where I would expect them to. So I look at the Bible and I see flying things, swimming things, that sort of thing. Those are really big categories. I don't see it mentioning the individual species. You read through Genesis 1 and 2, you won't see lions and tigers and things like that. So it's got to be somewhere between, you know, bird and the individual species of bird. That's where I would expect to find these differences. Mm -hmm. That's where I find them over and over and over again. It's astonishing. And so, you know, I, I shouldn't be astonished, but I am. I, I, it always delights me when I think, hey, the Bible works. What do you know? Uh, but that's exactly how it works in this situation. I find these differences that essentially make sense of exactly what I'm seeing in the scripture. I'm seeing those differences right there where they should be. As a scientist, uh, looking at all of this data and everything that you see, it seems what you're saying is that the Genesis paradigm answers all of this data better. Yeah, I think so. I mean, ultimately, I think it does because it embraces both similarity and difference. Now, as we've already said, there's just, there's lots of questions that are still out there. Um, but uh, I'm pretty confident given what our paradigm can explain, I'm very confident that those answers are going to be found.